Welcome to Quack & Co, the board game channel where every video is 10 minutes or less guaranteed and today we're going to be bringing you a background check on the Stormlight Archives Premium Miniatures currently over on Kickstarter. This is a series where we analyze and rip apart these campaigns and honestly, <laughs> there's some information here you should probably be aware of. Probably okay. be aware. Let's go ahead and start going through this because we do not have much time to stick with this, Wes. That's correct. Starting with quotes. So what we mean by quotes is going to be commentary, reviews, feedback on the campaign itself, uh, and everything here, every category gets a score one one to zero or zero. One, one to ten. To yeah. Ten to zero. One, one to ten. That's what we're going for, or zero, yeah, two, that's true. Uh, and generally on all Kickstarter pages, you're going to find some sort of a review. You're going to yeah. get an information from some independent reviewer telling you, is this good, is this bad, telling me more about now, it. Now, this is a miniature set, and so it there is adjacent. isn't that. They have a video showing off the resins where Brandon Sanderson himself is talking, mm -hmm. uh, but there is no commentary on the quality or production of the minis, so that gets a fat old zero. Yes. Exclusives. Uh, usually on Kickstarters, you're going to be spending your money because you should be able to get some value in return. Whether Something that is special. savings, whether that's getting it early, whether that is exclusive elements. So are there exclusives with the Kickstarter campaign, Jesse? There might be. Uh, nothing is labeled as exclusive. The giant miniature here might be available, but it's going to be a limited run. They are calling it collectible, mm -hmm. and there's a heavy implication that it might not be available, but it's certainly not exclusive. Yes. Yeah. So for that reason, we're giving it a four? We're going to give it a four. Like, it exists in the realm of legitimately might not be available after this because it's sold out. Right. Because Brandon Sanderson is very famous. However... Uh, it, it's it's not this this is not your only opportunity to get it. In fact, right. we actually have some information that will probably enlighten we'll get you yes. about other op options. Okay, so, so money. money money is going to be uh, whether or not you get savings yes. on this project. If if you uh, is you there know, a reason to back it during the campaign, or should you just wait and buy it retail later? There's no exclusives. It is going to be available on their web store mm -hmm. for as long as items last. Correct. Is there savings here, Wes? So, yeah, yeah there are. Um, if you go all in, you should get savings. Uh, we're assuming that the actual cost that they're showing as the retail value will be the value that they're going to use on their website. So, therefore, you're going to get a savings if you buy multiple items. So, yes. Ish. Ish. There's maybe about $20 worth of savings. Yes. Yeah. Ish. Uh, it's, but it's more if you go in, all all in and you get the big giant miniature however, thing. However, on top of that, USA uh, and well the rest of the nations around the world are also paying VAT on this project. So you're paying shipping and you're paying taxes that are imposed upon European backers. I don't mind. Every company can do what they want. Yep. But it does mean that I'm paying money that I shouldn't technically have to pay in order to support and deliver this project. Mm -hmm. So we're giving them a two when it comes to money. There really is arguably no savings here. It is just pure exclusivity as long as supplies last. Right. Uh, let's talk about the publisher and then let's talk about the designer. So yes. the publisher. <clears throat> What's been the history of the publisher so far? This is coming from uh, Brotherwise? Brotherwise Games. Okay. The folks who brought you Boss Monster. Um, and, of course, I'm going blank on all of these right now. What's the new one with the Boss Call Monster to Adventure. Game? Call to Adventure, yes. Keep going. Whole slew of things. Yes. Right? Fabulous. You, you, you I, I actually really enjoy like, all I know the games that they games. play. I do, I do. I'm old. My brain doesn't work as well as it used to. But they make some excellent games. The issue that we have, and that I have, is that they're all card games. Yeah, I, I mean, a vast majority of them. Uh, Unearth is another one that I really like. So they, they have one example of miniatures out there. That example of miniatures that we've been able to find from doing some sleuthing does not instill in me great confidence into mm -hmm. the production quality of these minis. No. But that being said, this is a massive $13 million miniature campaign. So maybe they spend the money where they need to, or maybe they go the D&D &D route, and they're kind of plastic molded. They don't look anywhere near as good as the resins. There's really no way to tell. The only that being thing, said, yeah. they do deliver. They do. Uh, everything so far, except for one project, uh, well, yeah. has delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, the last project was about three months late, so pretty close to timeline, especially yeah. during this day and age. Fantastic. And they have one outstanding small project for their board game side of the company, 
Um, but yeah, so we give them an eight on that because they have delivered. They're going to do yep. what they say they're going to do, and they're an established, very good brand. Uh, talking about the designer's pedigree. So normally in a board game, this would be the designer of the board game. In this case, is Brandon Sanderson and the per people who created the things you love involved in this project? And the answer is yes. Their artwork has been the source of inspiration. Their hands are directly tied to this. They are doing marketing and videos. This is official. This is mm -hmm. the way these characters are supposed to be represented. So we're actually giving them a very solid nine when yeah. it comes to designer pedigree and kind of what you can expect from this product. Uh, let's talk component value. Yeah. Um, what, what are you getting as far as if you look at all the different miniatures that you're getting, is there that dollar value in the things that you're going to be receiving? That is the real question here. Yeah, so when looking at this actual project, you have a, a, a variety of options. You have a big display model, and then you have a ton of little uh, uh, unpainted miniatures, and then a lot of options for, uh, I think, six total options for painted miniature sets. All of these are digital renders. We right. have no example from the publisher uh, outside of the resins in the video of what these will actually look like, what the production will actually be. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole skew of quality versus cheap that they could go down this line. If they want to make as, mo as much money as possible, they may do just like single single pass injection mold plastic that mm -hmm. like shoots out to backers, kind of like D&D &D does, like I already said. Yeah. If they want to go really insane and really high quality, they may have these like carefully hand painted. The larger scale this gets, the harder I think it is for them to justify that. Yeah, and they're already at over like 2,500 people with the painted options. So I'm giving them a four. I am overall not confident in the mini call quality of this Kickstarter. I think there will be some stuff that's very nice. I mm -hmm. think it'll be standard for any of your role-playing games. I don't honestly think it's going to match up with the quality that we see coming from larger miniature-based games. Right. I, I could be wrong. But this is also the very first giant set piece they've ever created as a company that they didn't even really want to do until the until the uh, Dragon Steel uh, team was encouraging them to do so. Mm -hmm. That doesn't instill confidence in me that they're going to be able to execute on it well. Uh, let's talk about uh, retail. The retail. Uh, so, is it going to retail? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be online, limited, uh, collect. They keep talking about it as a collectible thing. However, there's also a announced RPG game coming adjacent to this mm -hmm. where all these minis will be re-available. These smaller minis are going to be available, period. I guarantee it. They're not Always. going out of stock. Yep. The larger and the painted ones, the more custom ones, may be harder to get. Maybe put your money there if you really want to like pick and choose what you're backing. But either way, there's going to be another reprint campaign, and I bet they're going to upsell you on extra stuff for all of that down the road. Is it going to hold its value, Jesse? Oh, what are we giving it for retail? Uh, for retail, we're giving it a six. Okay. I think it is going to hold its value when it comes to the big one. The big one. I think the small ones yeah. are going to be things that like you throw around and you don't really care for too much. So if you want to spend $170 on stuff that you know you're going to love, great. But that big one probably will be able to resell at value. But because uh, of that, we give it a two. Their production schedule is saying they're going to be delivering by July. I think that is ambitious. I'm giving them a four because from what we've seen off of campaigns over the last year, I'm not confident that July is an accurate timeline and they don't give me any reason, any timeline or production schedule to believe that it is. Add-ons in the menu. Actually, you do your pledge. pretty good. Added cost is going to be $75 plus for a all-in pledge, which is already bringing you about $500. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about $30 for anyone backing an average mini. And you're looking at about $20 for extra exclusive minis that are in this campaign. Yeah. So overall, that brings this campaign to a grand total of a 48 out of a hundred. It doesn't mean that it's a bad back. It just means know. that when it comes to putting your money into something a year in advance, there's not a lot of those extra goodies yeah. or that reduced price or that exclusivity that you're typically looking for. Let us know if you're backing it. I know I am. Either way, how can I not? It's a fanboy. Either way, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time. It was tight, isn't it? How'd you feel though? No, I think it went well.